Hey, see this piece of furniture behind me? It's so boring, I can't even look at it. Let's get to painting. Guys, I didn't say it. Cannon said it, didn't you? He won't even look at that piece of furniture back there because he said it's so boring. Should we paint it? I didn't say it, Cannon said it, guys. He said that that piece back there is so boring, he can't even look at it. So we are going to do something with it. It's not super big. Three drawer, little chest. We're gonna do something with it. Hey everybody, if you are new here, my name is Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We do all things colorful, fun, whatever here. So if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Look at my nails, so fun. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos I put out each week. I do things on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I think we just have a lot of fun here. So I am a super colorful person and I am going to be painting this three drawer dresser. Clearly my dog knows how to talk. Doesn't yours? And he said it's boring and we need to do something with it. So we are going to, I don't even know what we're gonna do. I have to go think on this. You guys think I have a plan. I don't. Sometimes I do. Today, I don't. All right, let me go think on it, but let's prep this piece and get started. So this is the piece before. It's pretty flat on the front. The first thing that I'm gonna do is remove the hardware and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean it. This is a fairly simple technique that I'm going to use. I'm gonna use about four colors on this. I'm gonna add some Would You Bend moldings and show you how to do that. And then with the paint, I am going to be layering and dry brushing to create a textured kind of boho layered look on this. And you can use whatever colors you want, but I'll be using bright colors for this one. So here I'm going to clean this piece really, really well before I use paint on it. And so I'm going to clean it really well with my Dixie Bells White Lightning. And then I'm going to go over it with a clean rag and clean water to get any residual off so I don't have any adhesion issues. Because the front of this is so flat and plain, I wanted to add some faux keyholes in this. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the center of each drawer. I'm using my speed square so that I can just go directly down from where I measured the middle and I'm gonna mark it with my pencil and that's where I'm gonna put the little faux keyholes on here. And these keyholes are made by Would You Bend. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to heat it up. And because it's so small and I don't want to burn my fingers with the heat gun, I'm just gonna hold it in place with a flathead screwdriver. And what you're doing is you're heating it up so you can flatten it to the surface. Then you're gonna put some wood glue on it. You're gonna heat it up one more time and then I'm going to tape them in place. These are really easy to put in place and sometimes once you heat them, they kind of stay heated because they're such a small piece. But the next thing I'm gonna be doing is putting a border on the bottom. So I did wanna add a little bit of character to this piece. Obviously you don't have to if you don't want to, but I really wanted to just transform it. Here's the border that I was telling you about. And so right now it is hard and I'm going to heat it up with my heat gun to make it flexible. That way it's easier for me to line it up again across the bottom of it so I can measure out how much I need. And so it takes a little bit of finagling. Sometimes it, when it 
gets cold, it starts stiffening up. So you've got to reheat it a few times, but I'm going to put it up against the bottom right here and I'm going to tape it in place and I'm going to heat across it, tape it in place, heat across it, tape it in place so that I can see where it needs to go. Plus when I heat it at the very end, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to cut this with my utility blade or razor blade. You could probably even cut it with scissors but I didn't want to have to piece this together. And so I'm really careful to keep it all in one continuous border. I just like the way it looks better. And then I'm not having to use wood glue to fill spaces if I have to butt them up against each other. So this is a little bit time consuming because you have to heat it, tape it, heat it, tape it, but it's worth it because it's gonna be one continuous border and I'm not gonna have to fix any imperfections. Once I have my border cut and fit to the piece, I'm going to add my tight bond wood glue and I'm going to put it on the piece. I'm going to tape it in place, heat it, push it to the surface to make sure it's flush, tape it, heat it, tape it, heat it, all that good stuff. Now there's glue on it, so it should stay in place. And then I'm gonna allow it to sit for about an hour to let everything set and dry. And then I'm gonna pull the tape off and we will continue to paint. The four colors of paint I'm using are Peacock, Florida Orange, Peony, and Limeade. So if you don't use this paint line, you're gonna want a bright blue, a bright orange, a bright pink, and a bright lime color. I'm going to do a base coat of my peony, my bright pink on the entire piece. I'm actually gonna do two layers of the peony on here, allow it to dry, and then I'm going to start dry brushing the other colors on top of it and just layering and layering and layering. And I'm gonna go over it. And there's not really a, a order that I do. I just kind of look back and when I'm dry brushing, if I feel like, oh, I needed a little bit more lime on here, I'm going to dry brush with lime. If I need a little bit more blue, I'll dry brush with blue. And you'll see that in a little bit. But right now we are just putting a base coat of the beautiful bright pink peony. I have two coats of peony on here and it's dry. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to dry brush the peacock on here. Now, I am using Dixie Bell's synthetic brushes right here, but I switch over when I'm dry brushing to the premium chip brush. So my suggestion would be when you are doing your base coat, do it with a nice brush. And then when you start moving on to the next part of dry brushing, just use a premium chip brush or a cheap chip brush. I like the premium chip brush because it does cover a little bit more area. And so it, there is a little bit of a difference on here. So I am, you'll see me switch over to the premium chip brushes for these next parts, but right now I am just kind of dry brushing that peacock over top of the peony right now. I'm gonna allow each color to dry before I go in with the next one. So right now I'm using Florida Orange. You can see right here, I'm using my premium chip brush and I'm going to dry brush with my Florida Orange.
The next color I'm gonna dry brush will be Limeade. And when I do this dry brushing, I do it on the entire piece. So I know I'm only showing you this section, but it's so that I can get a little bit closer and you can focus and see what it looks like. But I do this on the entire piece. So I dry brush a color, allow it to dry, go in with the next color, allow it to dry. So right now, everything's looking a little rough. This is one of those techniques that you need to trust the process. So we went over to the left. I need a little bit more blue on here. So I'm going to dry brush with the blue because I wanted to bring some more of that out. So I'm going over the entire piece again with the peacock. And then I'm gonna go over it with the peony and you'll see, I just kind of toggle between colors. There's not really a rhyme or a reason or an order. It's just, you're gonna go with what color you think should go next. And so I wanted a little bit more pink. I guess I wanted a little bit more blue. And then I go over it with, I think next, the color that I use is, okay, Limeade is the next color I use. And then I just kind of toggle between all of them. Once I'm happy with where the colors are and I don't want to dry brush anymore, I take the peacock and I kind of go in the corners just to add a little bit more dimension to that. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the peacock and I'm going in the corners. Then I'm going to take my peony brush and I'm going to go over that. And these create kind of purples too. So some of these colors create other colors. And then I'm going to go over it again with the limeade and I'm going to dry brush it to keep that light color in there. But if you can see on the top drawer that it's a little bit hard up there by that left keyhole and I don't like that it drives me crazy and some of the areas are a little bit hard so I'm going to go over it with the peacock and you see it softens it up right there and then sometimes I take my finger you'll see me taking my finger and you'll see me kind of blending and rubbing it in while the paint is wet you can do that to soften it up as well I don't really like the hard dry brushing lines and so that's why I do that now I'm gonna go in with the copper gilding wax and I'm gonna go over those little faux keyholes and I'm gonna go over some of the edges and I'm gonna create a metallic look. So I am going to layer the copper and then next I'm gonna go in with the gold gilding wax and I am going to dry brush the gold gilding wax over everything. So with the copper, I'm just doing it kind of over certain areas. I'm not doing it over the entire piece. With the gold, I'm gonna take a bigger makeup brush and I'm going to dry brush the gold on the entire piece to add just one more layer of dimension. You can see right here how cool it looks. Once I start putting the gold on there, everything's starting to come together and I really, really love it. Obviously with the gold and the copper, we need to make the hardware bling. And so we are going to take this metal hardware and I'm gonna put the gold gilding wax over top of it. Now, these gilding waxes are oil-based and so they are self-sealing. So you're gonna allow these to dry for, I'd say probably 24 to 48 hours and they are going to seal. So it's not gonna rub off of there. I'm gonna put the hardware back in. I do wanna show you how I clean up the drawer sides. So the drawers are very, very tight. And if I were to paint them, it would affect the way they open and close. Plus it's going to scratch on there, okay? I know I could sand it down, I don't want to. And I wanna keep some wood on here. And so what I'm gonna 
to do is I'm going to pull out all the drawers and I'm going to take my rad pad and I'm going to sand all the paint that might have gotten on the drawers off and I'm just going to clean those up. I'm not going to paint the sides or the top of the drawers. Normally I do, but for this piece, because the craftsmanship is so just very tight and it's just, it's, literally they're right on top of each other and so it would just cause more problems if I added paint even just a little layer of paint is going to affect the way these drawers open and close so I'm gonna clean up the sides of the drawers and it is going to be done Okay, everybody, so this dresser is done. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember that you can use whatever colors that you want. So if you wanna get a layered texture look by just using a few different paint colors and only having to dry brush on them, then you by all means can do that. You can use neutral colors if you want. You can use some brighter colors if you want. It kind of looks like a rainbow sherbet a little bit. I keep making stuff that's like rainbow sherbet. Anyways, remember everything I use will be in the description below. So make sure you check out the description to go get everything that you need. And until next time guys, again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you are subscribing and I will see you guys later. Happy creating, stay on so you can see some really nice staged photos of this piece up close and personal. Have an amazing week, bye guys. I've been feeling this way for far too long